Hello! So, a theist and an atheist slash naturalist are talking, and the theist brings up the fine-tuning argument. The universe looks like it was intentionally designed to support life. The naturalist responds that 99.99 blah 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 lots of nines percent of the universe would instantly kill us. Only a small pinprick, our Earth, is remotely livable. This argument, called the argument from scale, concludes that our universe does not appear like it was created by a designer who had us in mind. How might a theist respond? Well, they could try to offer an explanation as to why God would have made the universe the way he did. For example, the sky is very beautiful. That is, the uninhabitable portion of our universe has great aesthetic value, and God makes valuable things. Furthermore, the beauty and the scale of the universe can inspire us and provide a sense of awe. Or maybe the purpose of the universe beyond our planet is to provide a frontier for future exploration, or to give us a lofty challenge to aspire to. Of course, making an unimaginably large collection of galaxies spanning unfathomable distances because it looks cool may seem inefficient. However, we do see something in the real world that is at least somewhat analogous. Humans with an overabundance of resources, whether because they're very wealthy or because they're playing a video game with cheat codes, they often make rather large and impractical structures simply because they think it has aesthetic value. So when we extrapolate to an omnipotent being with completely unlimited resources, it shouldn't be super surprising that we find he created something really big just for its aesthetic value. Now, these explanations aren't terrible, but they're not amazing either. I don't think you could just deduce a priori the fact that most of the universe would be deadly merely from the definition of theism alone. But at the end of the day, when this problem is presented to a theist, they could provide at least some sort of explanation as to why God might have structured the universe the way he did. However, the surprise twist of this video is that I think the way our universe looks is a problem for the naturalist as well, and they can't provide any sort of explanation as to why most of our universe is inhospitable. Which means this fact about the way our universe is structured ends up being evidence for theism. To explain why, let's look at some thought experiments. Here's the first one. An evil kidnapper has kidnapped 1,000 people, and you're one of them. He has decided that he's going to flip a coin. If the coin lands on heads, he will kill zero people and everyone will survive. But if the coin lands on tails, he will choose one person to survive and will kill everyone else. Then, everyone is put into separate rooms and he flips the coin. You don't know what the coin landed on, but you do know that you are not killed. Now, what do you think happened? Well, maybe the coin landed on tails and you got really lucky, but what probably happened is that the coin just landed on heads. In fact, using some math, you could find out that, given the fact that you survived, your credence that the coin landed on heads should be 1,000 divided by 1,001, roughly 99.9%. Uh, ignore the number on screen, I made a mistake in my math while animating. Okay, time for another thought experiment. There's a science fiction human creator machine, like it's a cloning machine or it zaps people into existence or whatever. This machine flips a coin, and if it lands on heads, it creates 1,000 people. If it lands on tails, it creates only one person. Now, this machine creates you. You wake up and you know all this stuff about the coin and the machine, but you don't know what the coin landed on. Either it was heads, and you're one of 1,000 people, or it was tails, and you're the only person created. Now, which do you think happened? Well, you could reason the same way as the last thought experiment. If the coin landed on tails, I would need to be pretty lucky for me in particular to be created, rather than someone else. But if the coin landed on heads, there would be 1,000 chances for me to be created, so to speak. If you buy this reasoning, you should assign the same, incorrectly animated, credence that the coin landed on heads, over 99.9%. From this thought experiment, I would like to draw out an important principle, which we can call the population principle. The more people that exist in a hypothetical scenario, the higher the prior probability of that scenario. 
Speaking roughly, the reasoning is that we want to know how strongly a given scenario predicts your existence. Scenarios with more people in them have a higher chance of one of them being you. There's a higher prior probability that you in particular would be created. You have more opportunities to exist. So when you update on the fact that you do exist, Scenarios with more people in them have their prediction of your existence verified and their probabilities go up. Now, do you accept the population principle? As far as I can tell, the reasoning I just presented is sound, but be warned this principle has very far-reaching implications. To return to the point of this video, consider what a universe that was completely habitable would look like. There'd be people everywhere, spanning the universe. That makes the real world, where only one planet is habitable, look like a barren wasteland. So, since a totally habitable universe would have zillions more people living in it, by the population principle, it would be zillions of times more probable than our own universe. Our own universe, then, is not what we would expect. Our own universe is extraordinarily weird. The theist has some sort of explanation of this weirdness. They can predict this phenomenon to some extent. The naturalist cannot. So, we have evidence for theism over naturalism. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that argument, but that's the end of- Hmm, wait, hold on, just a second. Hmm. Okay, so I was going to end the video here, but I just thought of something. If the population principle is correct, then what should we think about hypothetical scenarios wherein infinitely many people exist, like multiverses? Well, since there are infinitely many people, these scenarios are infinitely more probable than any scenario where only finitely many people exist. This means that the probability of infinitely many people existing is 100%. And the probability of only finitely many people existing is 0%. To recap, you can use your a priori knowledge about probabilistic reasoning, along with the a posteriori fact that you exist, to deduce the population principle. Scenarios with more people in them are a priori more probable. Well, it's not technically a priori because we're using the one a posteriori fact that you exist, but you get the idea. And the population principle will itself entail that we need to assign a probability of 100% to something like a multiverse with infinitely many people in it. Now, how does this tie in with theism? Well, take any hypothetical universe that would be on average good. It would be better for this universe to exist than not exist. Well, since this universe is good, God would want to create it, and since he's omnipotent, he can create it. So, he would create it. And since there are infinitely many such universes that it would be good for God to create, then we would expect him to create infinitely many universes. So, arguably, we can deduce a priori that theism entails the existence of some kind of multiverse. Naturalism, on the other hand, makes no such prediction. Even if a particular naturalist believes in a multiverse for this or that reason, there is no a priori reason to expect a multiverse. This means that a multiverse would actually count as evidence for theism over naturalism, since the former more strongly predicts a multiverse's existence. And if we accept the population principle, your existence basically guarantees the existence of a multiverse. So your existence itself is evidence for theism. So to recap this video, Space big, so God real, and you real, so God real. <laughs> Anyways, that's the actual end of this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.